you know, there's always this thing come, that comes up when we're dealing with patients, happiness, fulfillment. When you look at patients, when you look at people, you know, end of life and in your practice who are really, really sick and their quality of life is, you know, has changed and it is changing, you know, over the years, what does happiness mean to you now? You know, mm-hmm. what is happiness? Oh my gosh, that's that's such a good question. Well, for many, many years, happiness was just pushing in my career. I mean, my career has been extraordinary. It's interesting. I love being in the science. I love being in the clinic in the clinical science and you know, knowing that we're starting to figure out really important things in the aging journey. It's very, very satisfying to me. And I am well aware now, more than I ever was, that community that my home life, that my connection, my family, my the, the, the humans around me when I am not, you know, Dr. Fitzgerald and nurturing that is, um, you know, is really at the top. Like that's the pinnacle. That is um, what's most important to me. So yes, I'm in my career and I love it. And my career takes a lot of my energy and time, but nurturing all of the sort of the personal connection, et cetera. That's, I think that's where it's at. And that's the longevity. Amazing. Yeah. And the, and the longevity literature really supports it as well. I was just going to say that, you know, I'm happy you speak about connection because every one of these patients I spoke to you about were 100, 101. I think one turns, I go for his birthday party tomorrow night. He's 102 Aww. tomorrow. That's so that's so one party cool. I'm not going to miss. You wow. know, I'm not and so the 90s and above, one commonality that I've seen with all of them, you know, they've had different stages in their life, but are meaningful connections and relationships. It is unbelievable. You know, there, there's a lot of research out there, but forget about the research and the science, but it is there as a commonality. And a lot of these yeah. people may have not been in one relationship. The gentleman who I'm, I'm going for his birthday tomorrow, he lost his wife when he was 50 years old. Okay, but he had such a full That's over half his life, over half his life ago. That's amazing. And he's, still happy. he's not remarried. And in some cases, we have one or two of them who went through divorces, but moved into more meaningful relationships. So the whole perception of having one bad relationship in your life isn't the end. But I'm so happy that you mentioned that because it is that I'm 100 percent convinced in my mind. There's a lot of stuff, sleep, exercise, nutrition and everything. But I think relationships, fulfillment, feeling happy with what you have right now stands at the top of my list. So thank you for sharing that, Doctor. I love it. Yeah, thank well, thanks for your experience. Your experience is really fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's just so cool. And I you know what I want to say, like just to get to the a little bit of the literature, I can't help myself. But when we look at these centenarians, the people who are just really doing well and thriving and we measure their biological age, they're up to 30 years younger. So I like to say that 100 is the new 70. (laughs) I mean, really, when they're thriving, they are young biologically. It's extraordinary. Wow, that's possibility. And with possibility comes hope. That's beautiful. But speaking about measurement, are you using a telomere testing method to look at biological aging? Because we've been told about synolytic therapies and all of that. What's your method of measurement usually we're measuring the biological age by looking at methylation we're specifically looking at dna methylation so not methylation in general but just we're looking at patterns of what genes are on and what genes are off there this is referred to as a dna methylation clock or it's sometimes referred to as an epigenetic clock um they're newer tools they're the newest tools in the biological age Uh, measurement space. So telomeres are still used. I don't use them in my practice, but I certainly have plenty of friends who look at telomeres as part of their overall investigation. But every, I would say that everybody has moved into using the DNA methylation clocks now as well. And we use them in our practice, um, you know, exclusively this form of testing. There's bio, there's actually though, the standard chemistries that we all run as physicians are still useful, though. Like we don't eliminate our standard lab investigations, um, CRP, you know, blood sugar, insulin, et cetera, you know, the a, a complete blood count chemistries, all of that standard uh, laboratory analysis, I think, is, you know, essential to have optimized, though, as well. And this is like sort of an, an additional layer that we can look at. 
Great. I love what you spoke about muscle building because that's longevity for us as well. You know, bone health, longevity and everything. And I'm happy that there's a lot of limelight on that now because back yes. home in our country, yes. cardio was still in the limelight for the longest time. More cardio and very little weight training, but that's coming up in a big way right now. And we see the direct impact on patients' health and their quality of life. So, Doctor, what are some of the nutrients, the most powerful nutrients that you would suggest to our audience if they want to start with their journey towards just better health, because with better health will come longevity. So what are some of those nutrients that you would like to touch upon? So speaking of diet, I will just, you know, underscore your, you know, your mention of muscle. So we want to make sure we're getting sufficient protein and in whatever that is, if we're vegetarian, we can get it through beans, we can get it through legumes, et cetera, et cetera. There's ways that we can do it. If we need to lean on a protein powder, we can. If we're not, if we're carnivores, really smart sources of protein, you know, lean sources of animal protein, obviously fatty fish, um, eggs, eggs are a methylation or a, are a superfood as far as we're consumed. If people are willing to eat a little bit of liver, <laughs> liver is another, liver is a multivitamin in a food matrix. It is dense with B, with B12, with folate, with choline, mushrooms. We're huge fans of mushrooms here because again, they have these really smart nutrients to help with optimal gene expression, optimal, you know, longevity, mushrooms, shiitake, maitake, button, you know, whatever mushrooms available, they're all really important. So diet is is incredibly important. As many colorful veg, veg as possible, lots and lots of greens, cruciferous vegetables are gene whispering vegetables. Um, they are going to really help regulate putting the best genes on and turning the worst genes off. So lots of if you can do kale or Brussels sprouts or broccoli, um, etc, whatever cruciferous you can find mustard greens and so forth. Um, as far as supplements go, oh, and I should say nuts and seeds are also important foods. Supplements, I for ev most everyone needs some kind of a omega-3 fatty acid supplement. So for most of us, this is going to be fish oil. Uh, for vegetarians, it could be algae. Um, it could be flax. It could be chia seed, walnuts, etc. cetera. Um, most of us need extra vitamin D. Even if we're in the sun, most of us need a little extra vitamin D. We also need either fermented foods or we need to take a probiotic supplement. And most of us need magnesium. So these are the foundational nutrients that really pretty much all of us are getting. And then we can layer onto that some of the really cool, innovative products coming out, like the urolithin A I talked about. This is, again, mm -hmm. it's made from, from pomegranate, but we don't make it that well. So there's an isolated urolithin A compound that's basically almost exercise, almost fasting in a bottle. Doesn't replace a good diet, doesn't replace exercising, doesn't replace fasting, but it's just this awesome compound. If we're not getting enough um, turmeric in our diet, I would recommend taking a turmeric or a, or, or a um, curcumin supplement. Um, what else? I would, you know, green tea, um, quercetin, some of the botanicals that are that help us clear out those old pro-inflammatory senolytic cells. Quercetin is one of them. Uh, so there's a host of flavonoids that we can either get in our diet or take as supplements that I think are smart. 